The topic of today's discussion is asymptotic notation from the subject design and analysis of algorithm. As of algorithm is concerned, this topic is very very important as it is used to analyze the efficiency of an algorithm. The discussion of today goes like this. First, we'll see what is the definition of an algorithm. Then we'll discuss about analysis of algorithm, followed by what is asymptotic notation and the different types of notation. They are big O notation, omega notation, and the theta notation. First, what's the definition of an algorithm? It says that algorithm is defined as a collection of unambiguous instruction according to some specific sequence and such an algorithm should produce output for a given set of input in finite amount of time. So the key points here like the instruction should be very clearly defined and you should be very precise about the order in which you, have, you should have your instruction and finally your algorithm should produce the output within a given amount of time. Now we'll take an example problem. Assume you are given with 100 students result detail and from that, you are asked to find out the result detail of a specific student. Now, we'll take it like you have to find out the student whose register number is 30. His date has to be fixed. Here, we are going to look into two solution approaches. The first solution approach, what actually we are going to do is you start with the first data you check the register number of the first data and the item to be searched 30. If there is a match, then you get the detail. If not, you go to the second, third. Likewise, you should check until you find out the detail of a student. The second solution approach is Initially, you have to arrange your data in a specific order. You can arrange your data in the ascending order or it can be arranged in a descending order. Then you have to divide the element and find out what is the middle element. In this example, since the register number goes from 1 to 100 and the middle element falls to be 50 and assume that the data that to be searched is 30 now what will you do you have to search, you have to compare 30 with 50 and 30 is lesser than 50 so we'll come to the conclusion that the data is going to be in the left part not going to be in the right part of the data so we are going to totally skip the data item from 51 to 100 and the search pr proceed from 1 to 50 until you find the match so here the solution one is the well-known searching algorithm that is called as the linear search algorithm and the solution to is the binary search algorithm now what is the inference out of this that is for solving any problem, you might have many approaches and what you are supposed to do is you have to choose the best among all the different methods. Here comes the analysis of an algorithm. Now what is analysis of algorithm? It says checking whether an algorithm is efficient or not. That is called analysis of an algorithm. And there exists a systematic approach which is modeled by a framework called analysis framework. In analysis framework, in a systematic way, we are going to check the performance of an algorithm. To measure the performance of an algorithm, two factors are being used. They are the time complexity and the space complexity. 
The time complexity says that it is the amount of time required to execute an algorithm and space complexity is the amount of storage that is required to store your algorithm, the input, the output and even the intermediate results. And today's topic is based on time complexity. So, we'll discuss about what is time complexity. The time complexity is the amount of computer time required by an algorithm to run to completion. You might think that we can use the system clock time to find out the computational time of an algorithm. But this is not a solution. It has some issues like if you take a computer or a system where more than one program is going to be executed if it is going to be a multi-user system. And moreover, apart from these programs, there might be some background processes that might also be into execution. So, they have come out with the method to compute the computational time of an algorithm that is called frequency count. What is frequency count? It is the number of time of execution of the statement of a program. Now, we'll take an example. You consider an algorithm where you are having two for loop. One is the inner loop and the another one is going to be the outer loop. Assume inside the inner loop, you are having three instruction and the loop is going to be executed n times. The same way, the outer loop, there are four instruction and the outer loop is again going to be executed n times. So now, if you take the three instructions which are going to be inside the inner loop, it is going to be executed first in the inner loop n times and again in the outer loop, again it is going to be executed n times. So, totally it is going to be executed n into n times. So, those three instructions are going to be executed n square time. And coming to the four instruction in the outer loop, they are going to be executed four times and also there are two instruction which is outside the two for loops. Okay, so totally we can say that the execution time of this algorithm as 3n squared plus 4n plus 2. Here, the time complexity of an algorithm is represented as a function. And since the time complexity is always given as the higher order, we can state the time complexity of this example algorithm as order of n square. Now, if you take any algorithm, its time complexity will fall into a class where the time complexity can be 1, it can be log n, n, n log n, n squared up to n power n. From this statement, it is very clear that the time complexity, if you are having time complexity 1, then it is going to be lesser the time complexity of an algorithm if it is going to be log n. So, if you take there are two algorithms, once time complexity is given as n and another time complexity is given as n squared. So, we can conclude that the algorithm whose time complexity is going to be n if is going to be efficient than the algorithm whose time complexity is going to be n squared. Clear? Now, if you take any algorithm, it is not going to give the same result if you are going to change the size of the input. So, here the asymptotic analysis is going to be based on how the performance is going to vary based on your input. So, with the increase in the input size, the performance is going to be changing. The study of change in performance of the algorithm with the change in the order of the input size is called as asymptotic analysis. 
Now, what is asymptotic notation? It is a mathematical notation which is used to describe the running time of an algorithm when the input tends towards a particular value or a limiting value. There are three notations. They are the big O notation which is called as the upper bound, omega which is called as the lower bound and theta that is called as the average bound. If you take any function which can be represented as upper bound, lower bound or it can be represented as an average bound. So here function I mean the time complexity of an algorithm because with the help of the frequency count we are expressing the time complexity of an algorithm as a function. Now we will discuss each one. Now, coming to big O notation, which is called as the upper bound. It is used to define the upper bound of an algorithm in terms of time complexity. It always indicates the maximum time that is required by an algorithm for all the input values. So, of course, it is going to describe the worst case of an algorithm time complexity. Now, what's the definition for big O? The definition says the function f of n is equal to big O of g of n if and only if there exists a positive constant c and n0 such that f of n is less than or equal to c into g of n for all n greater than or equal to n0. So now assume we are going to have a function which is representing the time complexity of an algorithm and it is given us here 2n plus 3. So the time complexity of an algorithm we have taken it as 2n plus 3. So now for this function, we should find out what is going to be the upper bound. So we should find out the function g of n and the constant c such a way that this condition that is f of n less than or equal to c into g of n should holds good. So now a simple method is here we are having 2n plus 3. I should find out a function g of n and a constant c such a way that it should be greater than this 2n plus 3 and also I should find out it is for which value of n. Now what we can do here is since it is 2n plus 3 we can have 2n plus 3n. So definitely that will be greater than 2n plus 3. So it is going to be 2n plus 3n which is going to be 5n. So how we are writing is 2n plus 3 less than or equal to 5n. Here 2n plus 3 is f of n, 5 is c and g of n is going to be n. Now we will take n equal to 1. So when n is equal to 1, 2 into 1 plus 3 that is going to be 5. And here this side 5 into 1 that is going to be 5. So the condition here is 5 is equal to 5. So this gets satisfied for n is greater than or equal to 1. That is for all the values of n which is greater than or equal to 1 this condition holds good. So now what the definition says that if f of n is less than or equal to c into g of n then f of n is equal to big O of g of n. What is g of n here? g of n is going to be here n. So we can write here as f of n is equal to big O of n. Now we will see whether it will, it will be satisfied only for n. Can it be satisfied for any other uh, value here? So instead of n, now can I have it as n square? Of course, yes. So when I am going to take n squared instead of n, then you will be having 
2n plus 3 less than or equal to 5n squared. So definitely the, for that also the condition is going to holds good. Even if I am going to take any value, so here I am having n and if I am going to take whether n log n, n square, 2n square or n power n, for all the values this condition will holds good. So order of n or order of n square, order of n cube, all are going to be now the upper bound. On the other hand, if I am going to take a function here, g of n as log n, definitely the condition will not satisfy. So that's why I have given here as f of n is equal to order of n, that is correct big O of n squared that is also correct f of n is equal to big O of log n that is not going to be correct. So here if you take n and all the other time complexity values they are all the upper bound for this function and here whichever is coming to the left that is log n and 1 they are all going to be the lower bound for n. Now we are having many upper bounds so which has to be taken always the nearest one will be taken as the upper bound. So what is the upper bound for here 3n 2n plus 3 it is going to be n. Is it clear? Okay. Now we will go to the next one that is the lower bound. Lower bound is represented as lambda. It is used to define the lower bound of an algorithm in terms of time complexity. It always indicates the minimum time that is required by an algorithm for all the input values. It describes the best case of an algorithm time complexity. Now, if you look into the definition, it says that the function f of n is equal to omega of g of n if and only if there exists a positive constant c and n0 such that f of n is greater than or equal to c into g of n for all values of n greater than n0. If you compare your lower bound with the upper bound in the definition there is only two difference one is the symbol used here we are having omega in the place of big O there and also there we had less than or equal to in turn here we are having greater than or equal to. Now we will take the same example for simplicity. So f of n is equal to 2n plus 3. So what the definition says like before, I should find out a function g of n and a constant c such a way that the condition f of n greater than or equal to c into g of n should be satisfied. Now here we are having 2n plus 3 and we are going to take g of n as n and c as 1. So 2n plus 3 is greater than or equal to 1n. Now we will check with n is equal to 1. So when n is equal to 1, so this side it becomes 2n plus 3 that is going to be 5 and the right hand side it is going to be 1. So, 5 greater than or equal to 1, the condition is satisfied. So, here when n is going to be greater than or equal to 1, this condition is going to holds good. Okay. So, what is 1 here? C and G of n is n. Now, what the definition says? F of n is equal to omega of G of n if f of n is greater than or equal to c into g of n. So the function f of n's lower bound is going to be now n because what is g of n? g of n is here n. So we can write it like f of n is equal to 
omega of n now if you look into the time complexity class so we are here we are having n right so n is now becoming the lower bound and here if i am going to, to take here log n instead of n then again the condition will be satisfied if you what to take here one log n so then also this condition will be satisfied that is 2n plus 3 will be greater than log n and for one also the condition will be satisfied so what is the conclusion the n log n and also one these are all going to be the lower bound for the function 2n plus 3 on the other hand if you are going to take g of n as n squared will it be satisfied definitely not so f of n is not f of n equal to omega of n squared is not correct but f of n equal to omega of n is correct f of n is equal to omega of log n that is also going to be correct so here the lower bound we are telling n is also lower bound and also log n is also going to be lower bound in case no if you take one that will also be correct now out of this which has to be considered which is going to be very closer that is going to be considered so here what is the lower bound for the function f of n which is 2n plus 3 it is going to be n so we have seen the lower bound also here n and also the upper bound is also going to be n now we'll go to the third notation the average bound which is actually widely used and which is very important one so theta what's the definition for the average bound the function f of n is equal to theta of g of n if and only if there exist a positive constant c1 and c2 and n0 such that c1 into g of n less than or equal to f of n greater than or equal to c2 into g of n for all n greater than or equal to n0 so here we should find out two constant c1 and c2 and we should find out a function g of n such a way that this condition should holds good now we have already seen the upper bound and lower bound so where we have come out with the function g of n and we have taken a constant c1 and also c2 so for um, simplifying the explanation now we are we can take the same values so the function which we are considering is the same function that is 2n plus 3 and we are going to take here 1n less than or equal to 2n plus 3 less than or equal to 5n now here the main thing is so here both the side we should take the same function so the function which we have taken here is n so both the side here also we are taking n and here also we are taking n why here we have both the side we are having g of n but this constant is going to differ so here c1 and here it is going to be c2 now we'll take the value n equal to 1 so when you substitute that here 1 into 1 that is going to be 1 less than or equal to when you substitute here n then it n is 1 then that will become 5 and here also when you substitute that is going to be 5 so here 1 less than or equal to 5 less than or equal to 5 so the condition is satisfied for n and so for the value n greater than or equal to 1 and here from the definition since this condition is satisfied f of n is equal to theta of g of n what is g of n g of n is n so we can write like f of n is equal to theta of n so for the function 
2n plus 3. What is this 2n plus 3? It is the time complexity of an algorithm which is being represented as a function. So, for this algorithm whose time complexity is 2n plus 3, we have seen that the upper bound is n, the lower bound as n and even the average bound as n. So, there are some cases where we might be getting the value like this. Some cases, the upper bound, lower bound and the average bound might be different. Hope it is clear. Now, we will summarize what we have discussed. So, if you take any problem, to solve the problem, you are going to write an algorithm. So, we have seen what is the definition of the algorithm. So, now, if you take any problem, you can't say that I will be having only one method to solve the problem. You might be having more number of methods or more number of approaches. So, for each one, you will be writing an algorithm. After writing the algorithm, you should decide which one I should adopt. So, for that, what is needed? You have to analyze the algorithm. What is analyzing the algorithm? I should measure the performance of the algorithm. For measuring the performance, you are having two parameters. One is time complexity and another one is going to be the space complexity. If you take time complexity, so the simple method to find out the time complexity of an algorithm is frequency count. So, once you are writing an algorithm as a function, then you can very easily find out what is the time complexity of an algorithm. So, next, the algorithm's performance is going to differ for different values of input, different data set, the val its performance is going to differ. So, I should find out what is the maximum time that an algorithm will take or the minimum time that an algorithm take or else what is the average time that an algorithm will take to compute the result. Okay, there comes your best case, worst case and going to be the average case. So, for a problem to be solved if you are having more than one algorithm you try to formulate a function which is going to represent the algorithm's time complexity after that for each algorithm you have to find out what is the average time complexity what is going to be the uh, what uh, upper bound and also going to be the lower bound so for the both algorithm you should find out what is going to be the upper bound lower bound and also the average bound then you compare both algorithm and i have shown you like if you take any algorithm its time complexity is going to fall into your time complexity class for an example, if algorithm once time complexity is going to be n squared and the another algorithm's time complexity is going to be n power n. So, then you have to decide out of the two, the first one is best. So, I should adopt the first one. This all about asymptotic notation. Thank you.